In this video, we're going to talk about continuous time, uh, complex exponential signals, sinusoidal signals. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and uh, start with something a little simpler. So let's start with a case where we have, we don't have any complex, complex numbers in there. So we'll start with uh, first assuming that we have a signal and our signal is x of t and our x of t is equal to um, some value, um, let's, let's call it c, it times e to the uh, r t. And let's go ahead and assume here, furthermore, that c and r are both real. Okay? And that, that makes life relatively simple. We've seen this quite a bit of time. And the only thing we got to think about is R negative or is R positive. If R is zero, it's kind of boring. It's a flat line. But let's say in a case where R is, um, let's say, less than zero. Let's start there. If R is less than zero, then what we're going to get for X of T is just going to be X of T here and uh, t over here we're just going to have an exponential signal that comes from minus infinity crosses over and goes down and where it crosses the uh, the vertical axis the x of t axis of course is when t is equal to zero which means it's equal to c now if r happens to be larger than if it's equal to zero of course you know the answer is going to be just a c flat lined but if r is equal larger than zero, then what we're going to have uh, is a case where uh, it starts from minus infinity, goes through here, and then eventually goes to infinite. So this would be x of t over here, and this would be t, and of course the cross point is going to be zero. So that's the simplest form. That's when, um, when we have both c and r are both real. Let's make it just a tad more interesting or complex, whatever way you want to look at it, or closer to reality, I think would be the best way to think about it. Now we've got x of t is equal to c e j omega 0 t. Now, omega 0 just is the same as we have this called the you know, natural frequency. We've talked about that before, and um, it's just a number. Uh, uh, but there's a j in front of it which makes the power uh, the e to the power of a complex number let's assume that c is still is a real number still okay if that's the case you may recall and if you don't recall this is a really good thing for you to have uh, somewhere so you remember it euler spelled e u l e r has a bunch of identities which are the foundation of um, um, going from a sinusoidal signal to a complex number and basically what they say they say e to the j alpha alpha is a number positive negative whatever is equal to cosine of alpha plus j sine of alpha and this is pretty powerful and you should really keep it around um, and this, this is called an Euler identity. There are a number of different ways to write the Euler identity, but this is the most useful one. So now if you look at it, and if I were to tell you, just take a look at the real portion of this, you'll see that e to the j omega is simply a sine of sine, or as a cosine a signal. Uh, so interesting. So if I apply my Euler that we just learned, we not just learned, we've talked about it before, then my equation would be c cosine of omega zero t plus j c sine omega zero t. Oh, so this this particular case, if I just then, but it's very common for us that we just look at the real portion of this thing. So if I look at the real portion of this thing, this gets rather simplified, and I would have. I will have, if this is t and this is x of t, 
then and I, I'm just doing the real portion so real portion of this then I've got basically a sinusoidal signal right where where the peak is our minus C plus C and uh, the period we can also do that because we remember from earlier work we've done omega zero is equal to two pi over t so i even have my period which is from here to here t equal to two pi over omega zero all right so so if i if c is real but this is uh imaginary then i have that uh, if um, if it's both real then i just have an exponential going up and down as soon as you have a j in the power though you no longer necessarily an exponential uh, 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 um, signal but you could be a sinusoidal signal and i think i think what we are trying to do next it says what if what if that so this is we're going into the next uh, section what if i had my c okay is a complex number okay so c is complex and i'm going to represent c in a polar form so so it's complex complex and we we'll represent it in polar form okay and and then let's go ahead and say a is also complex the power of this is a complex and i'll talk about what a is so a let's say is the power of e basically let's call it a and how about if that was a complex number like r plus j omega zero and as you can notice this is complex but instead of being in polar it is in rectangular form okay so if that's the case then if I have an equation which is a, which if my C complex number is written uh, my, my I'm sorry my signal is written as X of T equal to C E to the a T I got a kind of an interesting signal here now I've got basically what I've got is um, magnitude of C e to the j theta that whole thing being multiplied by um, e to the j, uh, r plus j this is a right j omega zero times t to see what i did basically it says a is equal to that so i'm just going to plug that for a and this this is this is the equation i'm going to end up with now, if we do a little bit of a cleanup of this equation, we'll find out that x of t can be rewritten as basically c, okay, e to the rt, okay, and then e to the j, uh, we could pull the j out as well, let's pull the j out j theta plus omega zero so omega zero t plus theta okay i'm going to apply the eulers to this one so i'm going to turn it into a cosine and a sine so again it's going to be x of t is equal now to magnitude of c whatever magnitude of c is e to the rt cosine of omega zero t plus theta okay plus j magnitude of c e to the r t sine of omega zero t plus theta so if we just want to plot and we want to look at just the real portion of this but we so we can we can have a conversation of what this whole 
complex exponential sinusoidal signal looks like, at least its real portion. If you look at the real portion, the real portion has got a magnitude, which is, which is this piece is the magnitude. It's got an exponent. If R is positive, it's got an exponential portion. If R is positive, it's going to be growing exponentially. If R is negative, it's going to shrink exponentially. And it's got a sinusoidal signal. So that's where the name for this section comes from. Continuous time, complex exponential sinusoidal signal. This has got a little bit of everything. And depending, actually we should take a minute and take a look at this thing. If, if R is equal to zero, if, if this real portion is zero, you're just gonna have a constant multiplied by a cosine. So you got just a simple sinusoidal. If R is larger than zero, you got a sinusoidal, but that sinusoidal is growing over time. And if R is equal to less than zero, you've got a sinusoidal, but it's shrinking over time exponentially. So there you have a continuous time. Here, here is the whole thing. Here you have a signal, a full definition of a signal that's continuous time, complex, exponential sinusoidal signal.